Welcome back. Now we're going to look at uh, operation system and the actual processes that organizations go through to produce their outputs. And we now know that outputs are the final product, whether that be a tangible good or an intangible service. So every organization has an operation system and it's important that you see uh, this process as an operation system because in the exams they may use the term operation system and this is what it's referring to. Now as we said whether to that is to produce a good or a service they go through um, a series of processes to produce that. Now the resources that begin are what we call inputs and the inputs undergo transformational processes uh, so any kind of process that are transforming those inputs into an actual output and the output is the final product. So let's go a little more in depth. So let's start with the inputs. They are the resources that are used to produce a good or service and often um, the types of inputs will differ from um, product to product and from service to service. So the inputs are arranged and then they're modified to create the desired output. So there's six main categories that uh, we use for inputs and they are people, so employees, they're obviously pretty vital, uh, facilities and equipment, any kind of building, machinery, any kind of equipment that can be used, whether that be you know, technology or not. Materials, so they're your raw materials, your parts if you're building a car, then you know your steering wheel, your nuts, your bolts, etc., etc. Finance, pretty straightforward. That's just comes down to money. Information that could be any kind of recipe that you have, any kind of formula that you have. Uh, information on your customers, any trends, any information on trends, any kind of information at all. And then time. Now remember, all these are limited. Uh, so it's how we you best use these to produce the output, creates our efficiency. So organizations combine those inputs to produce their final output. So let's make hamburgers. We used hamburgers as an example from um, in the last video. So let's go through these resources. So first of all, to make our hamburger, we need people, we need employees to cook, cut, and, and serve the people. Then we have our facilities and equipment. So that's our cookery, that's all our kitchen, our cookers, our knives, uh, utensils, everything that's, that's needed. So any kind of, and plus our facility to actually serve the food, to, to produce the food and serve the food and any equipment required. Then we've got our materials, we went through them earlier. So the bun, burger, lettuce, tomato, and any kind of sauce that's required. Uh, so they're our materials. And then we need money to actually pay for those things. And then there's our recipe, so that's our information, and of course time. So using all those resources, and no doubt I'm no hamburger expert, at not at making them, um, there's probably a million other things that are going into making a hamburger, but you can see there, there's some examples of each one of those six resources. Now once we've got those resources, so those inputs, they then need to be transfer, transformed into a process, uh, into an output. Now, any process that is transforming inputs into outputs, that's what we call a transformation process. So, we try and, as an organisation, they try and do that as efficiently as possible. Um, and we'll look at ways to do that in later videos in how to increase our productivity. But this is essentially where most of the technology is used to try and reduce wastage, to, uh, to turn the inputs into outputs quickly, and to do it efficiently. So any activity an organization undertakes to transform the inputs into an output is a transformation process. So here's an example. So that for the hamburgers, that would include the cooking of the hamburgers, cutting of the lettuce, cutting of the tomatoes, and assembling the burger and, and then serving the food and probably, again, a million other things in between. I'm no hamburger expert. So once those inputs have been transformed, then there's the final product, and that's what we call the output. So essentially it's the finished product, whether that be a service, or in the tangible example of our hamburger, then that is a good. So it can be 
the quality of the final goods or services is often determined by those two, well, is determined by those two things, the inputs. So what are the quality of our inputs, whether that be the people or the actual materials or our facilities and, and uh, finance, and how good are our actual processes of transforming those inputs? So do we have, um, you know, do we cut properly, whatever it is, but any kind of process that's used to transform those inputs into outputs, the quality of the final output is determined by those two things, the, inf the inputs and the processes. And as we've mentioned in an earlier video, um, the outputs are different for manufacturing and service organisations. So that is our output for our hamburger would be the final product. So just to recap, the operation system goes through a series of, we have inputs, which are people, facilities and equipment, materials, finance, information and time. Those inputs are transformed via the processes and they're transformed into the final product, which could be a good or a service, and we call that our output. So in the next video, we'll look at what uh, the actual role of operations managers and start looking at uh, productivity and how to increase productivity. And just remember, for videos, activities, questions and more, always head to teachingbubble.com.